Welcome to this Good Friday service. It is a service where we reflect on Jesus' last day. This really is a day that um, calls all of our senses forward. Our smell, our sight, our touch, our hearing, and our seeing. So I invite you, before uh, you begin uh, watching this video, to maybe light a candle, to maybe find a place of quiet, as we reflect on what we call the shadows of this service. May we sit and reflect on what can be a dark time, but it's important for us to not rush too much forward into the good news of Easter as we contemplate really the sacrifice and what Jesus' ministry cost him. Let us worship God. So let us gather together around these words. Gather round, I have a story to tell of one who reached inside himself and took a handful of love, like a pile of stardust and said, this is for you. It is all you need. It is all you ever will need. There is enough here to change the whole world. Many laughed at him, mocked him, and ignored the invitation, but some dared to take it, and those who did noticed something about this love. They found they could do what the gift giver could do. They could stand with the lost, welcome the traveler, eat with the hungry. They found themselves doing what the man first did to them. Give something of themselves to others, they became like the man offering themselves, and as they offered themselves, others took the invitation, and many still do, and many still trust. It is enough to change the whole world. That evening, he took his place at the table with the twelve disciples. As they were eating, he said, I assure you that one of you will betray me. Deeply saddened, each one said to him, I'm not the one, am I, Lord? He replied, The one who will betray me is the one who dips his hand with me into this bowl. The human one goes to his death just as it is written about him. But how terrible it is for that person who betrays the human one. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. Now Judas, who would betray him, replied, It's not me, is it, Rabbi? Jesus answered, You said it. Because we are all betrayers, taking silver and eating, body and blood and asking, Guilty is it I? and hearing him say yes. It would be simple for us all to rush out and hang ourselves, but if we find grace to cry and wait, after the voice of mourning has crowed in our ears clearly enough to break our hearts, he will be there to ask us each again, do you love me?
Jesus left and made his way to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived, he said to them, pray that you won't give in to temptation. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. He said, Father, if it's your will, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not my will, but your will must be done. Then a heavenly angel appeared to him and strengthened him. He was in anguish and prayed even more earnestly. His sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he got up from praying, he went to the disciples. He found them asleep, overcome by grief. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. And while Jesus was still speaking, a crowd appeared, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, and Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the human one with a kiss? This day let all stand still, in silence, in sorrow. Sun and moon be still, earth be still, still the waters, still the wind. But the ground gape in stunned lamentation. Let it weep as it receives what it thinks it will not give up. Let it groan as it gathers the one who is thought forever stilled. Time be still, watch and wait still. Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant woman came and said to him, You are also with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of all of them, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. When he went over to the gate, another woman saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. With a solemn pledge, he denied it again, saying, I don't know the man. A short time later, those standing there came and said to Peter, You must be one of them. The way you talk gives you away. Then he cursed and swore, I don't know the man. At the very moment, the rooster crowed. Peter remembered Jesus' words, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and cried uncontrollably. Over and over again, we sit in our courtyards, our mouths speaking what our hearts are full of. We do not know him, do not, do not, do not. Know him, know him, know him, know him. Echoes loudly, emphatically, filling time and space, heaven and earth. And yet the saddest part is when the cock crows, we don't have the ears to hear, to hear, to hear, to hear. At least Peter had the ears to hear and the heart to weep. At daybreak, the chief priests with the elders, legal experts, and the whole Sanhedrin formed a plan. They bound Jesus, led him away, and turned him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, are you the king of Jews? Jesus replied, that's what you say. The chief priests were accusing him of many things. Pilate asked him again, aren't you going to answer? 
What about all these accusations? But Jesus gave no more answers, so that Pilate marveled. During the festival, Pilate released one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. A man named Barabbas was locked up with the rebels who had committed murder during an uprising. The crowd pushed forward and asked Pilate to release someone as he regularly did. Pilate answered them, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? He knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of jealousy. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas. To them instead, and Pilate replied, then what do you want me to do with the one you call king of the Jews? And they shouted back, crucify him. Pilate said to them, why, what wrong has he done? And they shouted even louder, crucify him. Pilate wanted to satisfy the crowd, so he released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus whipped, then handed him over to be crucified. Feet that danced through the streets of Jerusalem, welcoming the Messiah, now softly pad the back alleys in search of shadows. Hearts that leapt with joy at the sight of David's true son are thrown out with Golgotha's garbage. Hands that wrapped a newborn son in bright bands of cloth now shroud his broken body and lay him gently, tenderly, softly in death's manger. Where glad hosannas rang out, there is now only the silent weeping heart of God. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's house, and they gathered the whole co company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a red military coat on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put a stick in his right hand. Then they bowed down in front of him and mocked him, saying, Hey, King of the Jews! After they spit on him, they took the stick and struck his head again and again. When they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the military coat and put his own clothes back on him. They led him away to crucify him. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At about three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you left me? After hearing him, some standing there said, he's calling Elijah. One of them ran over, took a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus to drink. But the rest of them said, let's see if Elijah will come and save him. Again, Jesus cried out with a loud shout. Then he died. Look, the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came out of their graves and went into the holy city where they appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and what had just happened, they were filled with awe and said, this was certainly God's son. The images in my head, O oh, you who bear the pain of the whole earth, I bore you. O oh, you whose tears give human tears their worth, I laughed with you. 
You who, when your hem is touched, give power, I nourished you. Who turn the day to night in this dark hour, light comes from you. O oh, you who hold the world in your embrace, I carried you. O oh, you who laughed and ate and walked the shore, I played with you. And I, who with all others died for, now I hold you. May I be faithful to this final test. In this last time I hold my child, my son, his body close and folded to my breast. The holder held, the bearer bare, morning to joy, darkness to mourn. Open my arms, your work is done. After this, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate if he could take away the body of Jesus. Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one, because he feared the Jewish authorities. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and took the body away. Nicodemus, the one who at first had come to Jesus at night, was there too. He brought a mixture of myrrh and aloe, nearly 75 pounds in all. Following Jewish burial customs, they took Jesus' body and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths. There was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified, and in the garden was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish preparation day and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus in it. <laughs> 